world for the continued support of this event. We will have a full Fight Week media schedule will be distributed later this week, and we look forward to seeing media from around the world next week in New York City at the world's most famous arena. The first part of the call will, will have Tom Loeffler, Oscar De La Hoya, Abel Sanchez, and Gennady Golovkin. The second part will, 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 will also have Oscar, David Lemieux, Mark Ramsey, and Camille Estevan. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce Tom Loeffler, the Managing Director of K2 Promotions. Thanks, Bernie. We couldn't be more excited about this promotion. I mean, ever since uh, we announced the fight, you know, the, the uni title unification fight between the two biggest punchers in the middleweight division, that was back in July, and then just the momentum has grown. I have to give uh, Oscar and his company, Golden Boy Promotions, and the entire Lemieux team a lot of credit for accepting the fight with Gennady Golovkin. It's a true middleweight unification fight. Um, it's going to be in a sold-out arena at Madison Square Garden. Uh, at Madison Square Garden has been very supportive of this event. Um, HBO Pay-Per-View is uh, very supportive of the event, and the numbers are just uh, very optimistic on the uh, on the pay-per-view side. So um, we had a very successful uh, media training day yesterday with uh, Gennady at the Wild Card West, and Brian Valoria was there also. It's a tremendous co-feature with uh, Chocolatito Gonzalez versus Brian Valoria. And... Um, with that, I just I'd like to uh, bring on our co-promoter on the event, uh, Oscar. Uh, thank you very much, Tom. And uh, I would also like to uh, to uh, to thank uh, Tom and, and K2 Promotions and uh, and Gennady Golovkin for taking this matchup. I mean, obviously, this is a uh, a matchup that uh, a lot of people uh, across the globe are, are, are sal salivating about. Um, you have uh, the two punchers, two fighters who are are are, are gladiators, are warriors, uh, great uh, uh, great knockout punching power. Uh, this is uh, this is one fight that uh, that uh, the whole world is, is excited about, and um, you know. So thank you very much uh, to Gerenik uh, Golovkin for taking this uh, this this huge uh, 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 camp um, against uh, against David Lemieux. Um, I'm pleased today uh, to call ahead uh, of this epic showdown that will surely be bombs away between Gary Golovkin uh, and David Lemieux on Saturday, October 17th, live from the uh, Madison Square Garden and broadcast live on HBO pay-per-view. I mean, HBO is the best network to watch boxing, so I know uh, that they will have a phenomenal telecast plan. And trust me, you will get your money's worth. Um, IBF middleweight uh, world champion David Lemieux has an impressive record of uh, uh, 34 uh, wins with two losses and 31 uh, uh, knockouts. Uh, I've watched him train in Montreal recently, and let me tell you that he is looking incredible. He's looking sharp. He's looking fast. He's looking strong and eager uh, to, to get inside the ring uh, uh, with, uh, with Triple G. Uh, David Lemieux and Gennady Golovkin uh, represent... Uh, what I feel is the next generation of, of, of talented champion fighters of our sport. Um, uh, I mean, for the fans, obviously, this is a very exciting news. These guys don't hold back in the ring, which means guaranteed action from the, from the first bell. Uh, it will be bombs away. Uh, the fans are, are, are the real winners here October 17, and uh, I, I cannot wait for this event. Um, and obviously, we're, uh, we're extremely proud to be... Uh, to be uh, uh, working alongside uh, Tom and his team uh, at KT Promotion. So thank you very much. So with that, um, just to, to add on what Oscar said, it's two champions coming into the ring, both putting their titles on the line, and that's what the fans have responded to. As uh, Oscar said many times, it's the best fighting the best, and that's what the fans and the media want to see. The pay-per-view is priced very reasonably at forty nine ninety five. Um, had a great response from the Road 2 show that aired last uh, last Saturday, and the uh, the face-off is going to air next Saturday, and that's actually a unique uh, format where it's not only the two fighters facing off, but also the two trainers. Um, Mark Ramsey um, is the, uh, the uh, kind of the uh, strategist behind uh, David Lemieux, and David's been undefeated since he's been working with Mark, and Abel Sanchez um, it really has laid out the whole blueprint for uh, Gennady's Mexican style and, and the, the transition that he's made with the, uh, the professional style, which has allowed him 
um, you know, 20 knockouts in a row. So with that being said, I want to bring on the phone uh, Abel Sanchez from his training camp in, in Big Bear Lake, California. Uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, we are extremely happy to be part of this uh, epic event. Uh, I think it's about time that promoters and managers and fighters uh, uh, put their records on the line, put their uh, put their belts on the line, and the best fight the best. And um, glad that uh, Tom is the kind of promoter uh, for Gennady that is going to negotiate with everybody and also be in the same way. So we're finally going to see a fight that the fans have been waiting to see, the kind of fight that, that the fans have been waiting to see. So uh, we're looking forward to the 17th. Uh, I know Mark is going to have uh, David uh, very ready. Uh, Gennady is going to be ready, and get, like Oscar said, he's going to be bombed away. So we're looking forward to an explosive uh, fight for as long as it lasts. With that, I'd like to bring on the phone the WBA super champion, the uh, IBO and WC interim champion, is uh, Gennady Triple G Golovkin. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Oh, I have great training camp. I feel good. I'm ready to focus on it. I think Derek is ready to hard for that. No, I bomb it. Good show, good event. You know, not just one fight, just a couple of fights, amazing. Just big better people. You know, thank you to my coach, Abel Sanchez, and to my team. Thank you for promotions. Thank you, Paul and promotions. The JT promotions. This is oh, this big deal. This is big present for us, for boxing fans, for people, and for sports for boxing. Thank you. Bernie, you want to open up for uh, for questions now for the uh, yes. Go e- Ethan, go ahead and give me instructions again. If you have a question, please press star then one on your touch tone phone. If you would like to be removed from the queue, please press the pound sign or the hash key. If you're using a speakerphone, you may need to pick up the handset first before pressing the numbers. Go ahead with our first question, Ethan. All right, and it looks like our first question comes from Gail Falkenthal from Community Digital New. Go ahead, Gail. Good day, everybody. I've got a question I I think probably primarily for Abel. Abel, we are talking about a very offensive, um, aggressive fight, but what kind of defensive uh, instruction have you given to Gennady, or have you worked on any defense for this fight? Well, I think it's important to point out that uh, the HBO CompuBox uh, system uh, rates Gennady as the third best defensive fighter uh, with, with 10 or more fights. Uh, Andre Ward, uh, Canelo, a lot of those guys are behind him. So when it comes to defense, I think he's really adept at it. Uh, we have worked on all aspects of, uh, of training just because we have a uh, a force in front of us. We have a David Lemieux who is a very strong puncher and a very uh, aggressive kind of a fighter that comes forward. Uh, so we work on all aspects of it to, to make sure that we're ready for whatever David brings. Would you like to see Gennady recognized a little more for that defensive skill? I think that ranking would surprise a lot of fans. No, I, it, it doesn't really uh, uh, matter to me if he's recognized for it or not as long as the fans enjoy his style of fighting. I think that this, this fight has done so well uh, uh, at the box office and his numbers on, on HBO have done well. Hopefully the big review does well because of that, because of his style, because of his aggressive style, as in David. But also, I mean, that's what the fans want to see. The fans want, want to go back to those days, those yesterdays of, uh, of a great fights where the guys just uh, with intelligence and with uh, uh, defensive skills, uh, five great fights, and they stood in the middle of the ring and went at each other. Uh, I, I think that that's what this fight's going to represent and what's going to happen to this fight. Thank you, Abel. Good night, Galati, and we'll see you all in New York. Thank you. And our next question comes from Dan Raphael from ESPN. Dan, go ahead. Thank you very much, hey, guys. Uh, my first question for you, uh, Gennady. Uh, my question for you is, you know, we, we as Abel was talking about, we know that uh, – that your defense is maybe a little bit underrated. We all know about your great knockout streak and your offense. Um, David Lemieux, though, is also known for having. Yes, yeah, that cut out a little bit. Looks like he. All right, Dan, your line is now open once again. Oh, 
Can you guys hear me? We can hear you yeah, now. Okay. Were you were you not hearing me before, I guess, right? No, I cut out. Okay. Um, what I was asking you about was uh, basically we know about Gennady's defense and his offense. We know about Lemieux's offense. I'd like to know from Gennady, does he think about more about the kind of power that Lemieux supposedly has or the fact that he has been uh, knocked out in the past and therefore he thinks that it will be a big difference of him able to get to Lemieux's chin. In other words, is there one thing he's more interested in, protecting his own chin from his punching power or looking to go get him because he's shown uh, the fact that he hasn't been able to maybe take the best punch previously? I'd like Gennady's thoughts about that. No, good morning. You know, you're right. We're going to have probably the same power, same defense, same defense, and the same style. Yeah, you're right. I think so. We're going to have a little bit different style, like class, you know, boxing class, like uh, mentality, boxing mentality, boxing IQ. I, I guess really, so. I mean, put it like this. Will you be able to take his punch better than he'll be able to take your punch? Yeah. I think, you know, we'll have both great punch. Maybe he has strong, too. You know, I I know my power, too. It's not just power, just timing. It's just a little bit different class, you know, boxing class. Timing, speed, discipline, and position. This is very important for us. Abel, could you weigh in on that? Yeah, well, what he's trying what he's trying to say is, uh, I think that he's the smarter fighter in, in the fight. They both have power, they both have speed, they both have uh, great knockout records. But the IQ, the uh, the boxing IQ, will be the difference because I think he thinks that uh, uh, it's a different class as far as the uh, that part of it, uh, and he'll be able to get to David because he'll figure him out. Uh, but David uh, can punch, so, so it's not going to be like it's going to be an easy fight. So both of them have the same kind of punching power, but uh, the IQ is a little higher in the same boxing ones. Understood. Uh, another question for you, Gennady. Uh, one of the reasons why there have been some bigger-name fighters who haven't really been interested to fight you at this point, uh, they say, oh, you know, Gennady, he doesn't really, he's not that well-known, he doesn't really bring a lot to the table. And I look at the way this promotion is going, the expectations for this fight, the way that your uh, television ratings have been on HBO. Then I see you in this major commercial on TV the other night with the Apple Watch. Uh, it seems to me that they, people can't say Gennady Golovkin doesn't bring anything to the table anymore. Can you address that and, and the fact that you seem to have crossed over to a certain degree where now it will become worthwhile for people to fight you because there will be riches involved in that? You know, uh, that I am a boxer. Just respect my my team and all this great work. This is my first step, my first step of future, maybe for my story. You know, and you know this for promoter story. You know, thanks to promoter, promoter this good work. You know, I respect my opponent. I know this unification fight. He's champion too. You know, so it's a big deal for us. This is my first step. Just respect everybody. Tom, could you uh, address that perhaps on, 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 on where Gennady brings us financially now with uh, people can't run from him anymore because there's no money? Dan, I think that excuse was not valid anymore over a year ago. I mean, when Gennady sold out the StubHub Center, when he had over 12,000 people at the forum, um, you know, people you know, used that excuse in the past of a reason why it didn't make sense to fight Gennady. But you see... Um, with this promotion and with the dance partner, you know, with the Gennady having a, uh, a marketable uh, opponent with him who's another champion, I mean, that brings us to a whole different level. And, and uh, that's what we've always said is the marketability for Gennady. And, and you touched on, you know, the uh, Apple commercial campaign that we did uh, with Gennady that debuted on Monday night of football. And uh, it was, uh, we got a tremendous reaction. He's just a very marketable fighter and a likable fighter, and David Lemieux is also very marketable, very popular uh, as a champion as well. So that's what, it's just the chemistry of the promotion uh, and, and the two uh, champions fighting each other that's taken this to a completely different level. Uh, Tom, one thing very quickly, by the way. Uh, I mean, I certainly know who Gennady is, and boxing fans and other boxing writers know who Gennady is, but they didn't identify him in the commercial. Uh, any particular reason for that? I mean, so there, there might be some people who, who don't know him, who, who still don't know him. They saw it, but they're not really sure who it is. 
Um, they, they they've done uh, five or six different spots with uh, different uh, different people in uh, different segments. Uh, so they haven't uh, they didn't distinguish uh, the, the people uh, the individuals on the, the commercial campaign, but they they definitely have on the Apple website. They've uh, identified who's in in each uh, in each segment. So um, gotcha. Okay. You know that's how they've identified the people. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate it, and uh, I'll see you next week. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. And our next question comes from Robert Morales from Los Angeles Daily News. Robert, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, this question is for Abel. Uh, <clears throat> Abel, uh, you know, everybody improves as they go along, and I understand that. Um, but, you know, in 2011, uh, the Mew lost to Marco Antonio Rubio and Joaquim Alcin. Uh I mean, just how dangerous is David Lemieux? I mean, I know he's got a lot of knockouts, but as Evander Holyfield once told me, it's not how many knockouts you have, it's who you've been knocking out. Um, in your mind, if you look at his ring record, just how impressed are you? Well, first of all, going back to the Rubio fight, I, I think he was a young man at 22 or 23 years old who who uh, everybody was laying uh, riches in front of him. I, I believe before that fight, they had an HBO special on him, and they, they, they were touting him as the next big thing at 22 years old. I, I, I believe he was a little too young. He fought a guy who was very experienced. Marco Rubio uh, took all he uh, had to throw for the first six rounds and then, and then tired him out and was able to put him away. But that was inexperience on David's part. Uh, the skills were still there. The punching power was still there. It was just inexperience that made him lose that fight, in my opinion. Uh, then Mark Ramsey comes in after uh, uh, those two losses, and now they're on a roll. They're on a roll because Mark has taken over not only physically but mentally over David's uh, boxing uh, program. So it, it's easy for David now to just listen to somebody instead of being the boss and, and doing things his way. Now he's got a guy that's uh, just running the show for him. So uh, uh, he fought in the last two or four fights. He fought some... Uh, I think he's a pretty good fighter. The last fight in Dom, and Dom is a, was a world champion, went down a couple times, I guess, but uh, uh, he's a very difficult guy to fight. Uh, he beat Curtis Stevens, uh, I witnessed that down in Santa Monica. Uh, so he's not a bad fighter. So uh, David has got, I'm not going to say uh, an extensive resume, but he's got uh, fighters on his record that have, that have done something. And uh, the thing you can't take away from David is that he can't, he can't punch. Uh, he proved that in the last three or four fights. He can't punch, so uh, that's something that uh, uh, on the 17th, uh, any, it can go either way. Uh, if David lands a good punch and Gennady's not ready, maybe Gennady goes down. So uh, we're definitely looking for the best David Lemieux and the biggest punch. Okay, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry for not calling yesterday, by the way. No, that's all right, brother. <laughs> And once again, if you have a question, please press star then one on your touchtone phone. And our next question comes from Bob Velan from USA Today. Bob, please go ahead. Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, my question's for Tom. Tom, regarding Gennady's first pay-per-view, um, what would you consider to be a success? You know, Bob, we're always very uh, conservative. With our uh, estimates, um, HBO was very supportive of the event. They wouldn't have, uh, um, you know, greenlit or supported the event if they didn't think it was going to be successful. Um, you know, when we made, when we made the deal with Golden Boy, it was a very fair deal as far as uh, how the structure of the promotion is. And um, I think, uh, you know, as the promotion's gone along, a great indicator for pay-per-view sales is ticket sales. And when this event broke the the pre-sale record of any boxing event in, that uh, MSG has had and then sold 15,000 tickets within the first week, I mean, that's a huge uh, indication that the, uh, the pay-per-view is going to be successful. But I'm always uh, conservative on the estimates, and um, I think uh, it'll be a very uh, – I'm very optimistic on, uh, on the results uh, for the pay-per-view. Do you, do you feel – and this is kind of piggy – Piggybacking on uh, on Dan's question, but do you feel that this is a um, that Gennady is well known enough uh, around the country to to attract people? Because I'm, you know, Lemieux is uh, David Lemieux is a Canadian. 
you know, he's well known to boxing fans, but uh, you know, is he is he well enough known that people are going to say, you know, I have to see this fight? I think it's more so than the individuals is the combination uh, of the two champions fighting each other. Gennady is breaking through where he's going into the mainstream. Um, a lot of the we've brought him to you know different entertainment events, and a lot of the entertainment entertainers said they're his favorite fighter. Um, so he's definitely uh, crossing over. And when you have a matchup against a guy like David Lemieux, look, if this was uh, somebody that wasn't known uh, or two fighters that weren't known in the main event, they, we wouldn't have sold 15,000 tickets in the first in the first week. So I understand what you're saying as far as uh, you need a broader scale, broader base uh, for the pay-per-view. And it's a risk that we took. You know, when we sat down with Oscar and, and uh, his, his team at Golden Boy, you know, it's like n- neither fighter has been on a pay-per-view. Uh, also with Chocotito and Valoria, it's the same situation. But when you put all that combination together, it's a great value for uh, the fans and for the event. And I think the boxing fans will really respond um, to, to this event. And having uh, Chocotito on the uh, on the card also increases your Hispanic uh, uh, viewership, I would think, huh? No, there's no question. It's a perfect uh, combination. Um, having uh, Chocotito against uh, Brian Valoria. Brian Valoria is very popular as the, uh, you know, he was on the, uh, the 2000 Olympic team um, for the United States and uh, brings a very strong Filipino following with him and uh, Chocotito a very strong Hispanic following uh, with him. So it's a, it's a great one-two punch and, uh, and, and that's, that's really where uh, our optimism is as far as the success of, of the event. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. Good luck, guys. Thank you. And our next question comes from Andreas Hale from Ring Magazine. Andreas, go ahead. Hey, guys. Uh, Abel, this question is for you. Um, in Gennady recently said that you know you've been working on his Mexican style. Can you kind of elaborate what the what it means to be fighting a Mexican style? Uh, the Mexican style that we're, that we're trying to develop with him, we have been trying to develop with him. It's just a more a more entertaining style, a, more, a style that uh, is reminiscent of, uh, of some of the fights in the past: uh, uh, Duran, Gomez, uh, Sanchez, uh, Chavez, and, and even Oscar's fights of 20 years ago or 15 years ago, where guys stood uh, in the middle of the ring and, and went at each other, and, and you see them, of course, to use their legs and. And, and gave the fans uh, the kind of fight that uh, they deserve for the money that they're paying. Uh, so it, it's more of a, to answer that question a little uh, easier, it's just more of an entertaining, aggressive uh, uh, American public uh, tax fight. And how would you say Gennady has progressed in adopting this Mexican style over the past few fights? I think he's done very well. I think that uh, this is the fight uh, that finally uh, present the challenge to him mentally. Uh, I've always said in the past that the great fighters, it's not so much the physical challenge, but it's the mental challenge that's important to them. And, and in this training camp, he has uh, proven me right by just the attitude, just the atmosphere in the gym has been so much different because he does uh, perceive a challenge and perceive a, a fighter that uh, uh, is as strong as he is and, and punches as hard as he does. And for as long as the fight goes, uh, he's going to have to be in the speed of cues just like David will. And the guy that lands the, the first big punch is the guy that's going to uh, gonna go to sleep. And one other question for you, Abel, and, and I hate to bring up Andre Ward's name, but do you, do you believe that a lot of fighters now are starting to use Gennady's name to kind of get recognition for themselves? Um, because it seems like they're calling him out saying that he's ducking fighters or, he's, or Carl Frock said he's not a good uh, a pound-for-pound fighter, but they always seem to have their, his name in their mouth. I think it's that's history. I think that every young fighter is calling out the older fighter, and when the older fighter gets to the young fighter is calling him out. Uh, at one point when Gennady was uh, beginning, uh, of course we were mentioning the other names that were above us, uh, but that's just the nature of the beast. Uh, that's something that has to be done so that uh, uh, your name is out of print. But at this point, uh, uh, it's okay for, uh, for Andre to call his name out, but Andre needs to fight. Andre needs to fight. To, to be relevant, to underneath the fight so that the people don't forget who he is. I mean, just because he won a super six four years ago and fought, fought, fought two times in the last uh, three years against nondescript opponents, uh, doesn't make him uh, qualified for those kind of fights. Uh, so I think that if he starts fighting and becomes relevant, then uh, I'm sure that fight is down the road. But until then, uh, 
doesn't make any sense to us. Cool. Thank you, Abel. And our next question comes from Dave Spencer from Fight News. Dave, please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, question for uh, Gladi. Um, there's been a lot of terms through through this promotion and this uh, conference call about breaking through, being more more entertaining with a Mexican style, despite finally presenting a challenge. Um, there's a couple of other significant uh, middleweight fights coming up uh, in the near future with uh, Quinlan and Jacobs and Alvarez Cotto. Um, do you see this as uh, as a breakthrough fight for you? And where do you see yourself in about a year's time with uh, with these with these two significant fights on the horizon as well? You know, you are right, right now. I focus on David Mendoza because I respect him. He he is good fighter. You know, he's champion. In the future, yes, of course. But now in middle division, it's a very good situation. It's a very interesting situation. You know, three or four fighters, like Pedro fighters, Canelo Alvarez, Miguel Cotto, and Lee. This is, you know, these are Pedro fighters. I want unification for I want. My goal is all about middle division. You know, my focus on middle division. Why not? And willing with. Uh, with Jacob's fight. It's very good too, you know, it's very interesting for us. For not just for us, but for middle division. Okay. Uh great great three four fights in middle division. Very nice situation. Okay. Um at the age of uh of thirty three, certainly not to say say you're old, but is there is there any is there any uh Acceleration or rush to do uh, get these fights made sooner uh, sooner than later. Oh, it's promoters. You know, I feel great. I feel like twenty. You know, I respect like Baron Hawkins. I feel like shoot, look look at him. He's fifty. He's like thirty years old. Oh, he's a young guy and very smart guy. So he's he's I, also an an alien, but no, this is absolutely <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And our last last question comes from Mike Woods from Ring and the Sweet Science. Mike, go ahead. Hey, gu hey guys, how you doing? Can you hear me? Oh, Mike. Yes, yeah. All right, good stuff. Um, my question is about the stakes for the fight. The fight stands on its own merit quite well, uh, but there are some big stakes down the line. This question is for Oscar, if he's still on the call, and Tom, I do wonder, have you guys made an agreement in principle to have the winner of this fight fight the winner of Cotto and Canelo? Well, I, I, can, go, I can go first on that, Michael. It's, uh, okay. As you mentioned, it, there is uh, a lot at stake. Um, uh, not only uh, the winner having unified the titles, but then also is in the position of uh, being the mandatory for the winner of Cotto Canelo, which is also a great fight a month later. So it's really exciting times, as uh, Gennady uh, alluded to, in the middleweight division. Uh, it would be premature, really, to uh, to start having any discussions with Oscar because we don't know who's going to win on October 17th, and, and, and we don't know who's going to win November 21st. But um, after that all shakes out, it's going to be... Uh, you know, great times uh, moving forward and, uh, you know, just continuing the path of, of trying to unify the titles. Oscar, your thoughts on that? Yes, I mean, it would be premature to even talk about uh, such a matchup. Um, you know, uh, 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 October 17th is such an important uh, uh, fight for uh, for Triple G and David Demu, and uh, November 21st is uh, is uh, is important and dangerous fights for Canelo and Cotto, so uh, we don't know what the outcome will be, we don't know what's going to happen, so it would be very premature to even discuss it, um, but it, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, absolutely, thanks a lot guys, see you soon, thanks Mike. 
that will wrap up our end of the call, Tom. Uh, why don't you go ahead, uh, Gennady, if you've got some closing comments, go ahead, please, from Big Bear Lake, California. Thank you so much, everybody, just saying. You know, don't lose my five, October 17. I'm going to make a show. It's a great show for people. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, Gennady. Abel, just a couple of days away from leaving from New York City. How are things going up there? Uh, things are going great. We're uh, a couple of days from wrapping up the training camp. Friday's our last day. Uh, it's, uh, it's becoming that event that we all uh, had hoped it would be. Uh, and we're looking forward to the 17th, uh, putting on a great show in front of uh, a sold-out crowd. Great. Thanks very much, Abel. Thanks, Mr. Gennady, for joining us from your camp. Tom, go ahead with some Thank closing you. comments, please. Uh, just um, to reemphasize, uh, you know, two champions in the ring. Gennady has a great dance partner with David Lemieux. That's what's going to create fireworks in the ring. On the promotional side, I have a great uh, dance partner with Oscar and Golden Boy Promotions. They've really been very supportive. Um, with the whole promotion, and I think uh, all the fans and all the media are going to be in for a great event October 17th. Thanks very much, Tom. We'll turn the call over now to Cecilia Zanuga from Golden Boy Promotions and introduce David Lemieux's side. Go ahead, Cecilia. Thank you, Barney. Um, hi, everyone. I'm going to go on a very small break, uh, one minute maximum, to make sure we're all on the line and ready for to take over all your questions. So, Ethan, go ahead and put us on a short break.
welcome back to the conference call. Once again, if you have a question, please press star then one on your touchtone phone. I will now turn the call over to Cecilia Zuniga from Golden Boy Promotions. Cecilia, please go ahead. Thank you so much, Ethan. Um, I want to go ahead and thank all the media members for joining us today. Now for the second portion of the call, I would like to and to introduce Team Lemieux, I would like to reintroduce Oscar De La Oya, Chairman and CEO of Golden Boy Promotions. Thank you very much, uh, Cecilia. Uh, as all the media has uh, has already heard uh, all the details uh, uh, about this terrific event, uh, let me uh, go ahead and introduce you, Team Lemieux. Uh, first off, I am pleased to introduce to you um, um, uh, Camille Estefan. I have the Tiger Management. Is the, uh, manager of David Hello, Oscar. Thank you. Uh, uh, great being here today. Um, looking forward to a, a wonderful event. Uh, everything's been said. There isn't too much more to say. I'll give you a little bit of our perspective as uh, we head into this uh, with 10 days left. So, you know, we have the top two middleweights in the world fighting each other. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is a real treat. Uh, it's it's mm -hmm. a real treat for the fans. It's a breath of fresh air for boxing. Uh, it would be like two titans uh, fighting each other, or two major mountains. I don't know. Envision, uh, imagine Everest versus Kilimanjaro. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, the pleasantries are finished. Uh, now it's time for, for the action. We are coming to New York to beat Golovkin and take the belts. That's the goal uh, and the only goal. We have done our homework very, very well. Uh, we feel extremely confident because of the work we have put in. And the stage is set. You know, guys, 10 days to go. Can't wait for the 17th. MSG is going to be rocking. Thank you. Thank you, Camille. And now uh, the man in charge of getting, of getting David and you ready for this battle on October 17th. He is a trainer, Mark Ramsey. Mark Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to, to speak with you today. Uh, we just had an amazing training camp. Uh, David just uh, just reached all, uh, every single objective that we fixed for, for that uh, great victory for next week. And we had, a, like I say, a very, very good training camp. Now we work on working on uh, some finishing, and everything, everything's going to be uh, ready for, for ne next Saturday. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, well, David is ready for this test. Uh, he is looking the best I've ever seen him look. Uh, my business partner, uh, the legendary middleweight uh, champion Bernard Hopkins, and I were in Montreal uh, at David's media workout recently. And, um, and take it from us, uh, we know a thing or two uh, about what it takes to fight the very best and what it takes to be world champion. And David has it. Proved uh, that in June was an exciting win over the dangerous uh, Hassan Antam, and uh, and he will do it again on October 17th. Uh, so now I am pleased to introduce to you uh, the current IBF middleweight uh, world champion, both in an impressive record of 34 and 2 and 30, uh, 31 knockouts from Montreal, Power Hunter David Denise. Hello, hello. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you, uh, everybody. Um, it's been a it's been a great camp. It's been a great uh, it's been a great uh, great training. Uh, everything has been on spot. Uh, I've never had a more complete uh, camp than this. Um, I've been pushing uh, myself uh, to the maximum uh, uh, with each uh, each training, with each uh, exercise, with uh, with everything envisioning the big the big day ahead of me October 17th so uh, uh, I, I did everything I had to do to make sure I have no regrets on October 17th because the plan is to walk out of that the Madison Square Garden with those belts and hopefully without a broken nose <laughs> alright well we're ready to go ahead and start the Q&A portion of this call Thank you. If you have a question, please press star then 1 on your touchtone phone. If you wish to be removed from the queue, please press the pound sign or the hash key. 
All right, and our first question comes from Dan Raphael from ESPN. Dan, please go ahead. Hey, everybody. Hey, David, how are you? I'm great. Hey, Dan, how's it going? Good to talk to you. Uh, David, here's my question. Uh, Gennady Golovkin, when uh, a lot of other fighters get asked about fighting him, they either ask for way too much money or they just say no. Uh, yet when this fight came up, uh, by all accounts, from from your team, from Oscar, from Camille, you wanted this fight right off the bat, you know, not wanting to do anything else after you won your title. Uh, some guys sit on it, maybe take an easier fight. Tell me what was it in your mind that made you decide, you know what, I want the guy that everybody else doesn't want to fight. Well, the initial uh, plan in my head is that I'm ready, and it's uh, now or never. Let's uh, let's do it. Golovkin's at his best. I'm uh, getting to my best, uh, and I will be at my best on October 17. So, so in my head, if I beat uh, the best middleweight there is that everybody's pointing their fingers at, I'm gonna be the best. So, that's, that's the plan, you know. Uh, I've been working very hard over the years, and I, I got a very significant win the last fight. I got title. I got uh, the IBF, and uh, now uh, uh, we took a big step, and we're over here uh, unifying the titles. So it's, uh, it's we're ready for it. That's why I took the fight. David, I think uh, most people look at it and say, you know, going to be a, an exciting fight. That's just the way both of you guys uh, perform. Uh, but but that you're the underdog in this fight because of the, the, the top kind of streak that, that Triple G has been on over the last few years. And they look and they say, well, you know, Lemieux, he got knocked out a few years ago, uh, lost a couple of fights. Um, how do you see that shaping up? And, and does that do those losses haunt you or do they drive you at this point? Or do they not matter anymore? Those uh, two losses are completely insignificant to where I am today because, uh, you know, everybody has their path, everybody has their ways of uh, doing things and uh, their evolution in uh, becoming a champion. You know, uh, some guys go undefeated, some uh, some have defeats and become the greatest fighter out there. But, uh, but, but I don't, I, they have zero signification anymore in my, uh, in my past for those two losses where there were uh, some miscalculations in what I did. I lost those two fights for, because of things I neglected, and uh, I changed everything in my, in my life to, to, uh, to be where I am at today. So uh, I think it's been a big achievement from, from my behalf to, uh, to where I am now and what, the changes I've, I've needed to do to fighting for a unification title. So it's, uh, it's a big step I took, and, you know, the numbers speak for themselves. Everybody understands the gravity of this fight. I think uh, the people uh, are going to be a bit surprised with what I bring to the table October 17th. You know, I'm a big underdog in this fight, and to me it makes a difference. I know who I am, and I know what I'm going to bring to the table. So we'll see after the fight. <laughs> David, one thing that we know you bring is punching power. Uh, I wonder, do you do you just feel like that if you're able to get to him, that your your power uh, he's shown a great chin. I mean, if you, if you ask him and his camp, they say that through 300-plus amateur fights, uh, his 30-plus professional fights, that he's never been on the floor, ever been knocked down, uh, never really been seriously hurt in a fight. Um, but, but I'm not sure he ever fought a guy with the pure power that you have. So do you feel like that if you can touch the chin or get to the body or whatever, that you can be the first guy to do some serious damage to this guy and maybe get him on the deck? You know, I don't look at it his past or his future or anything in that I'm going in there, me being neutral and him being neutral. We're two hard punchers, and it's going to be a uh, – we're both at zero zero when we enter into that ring on October 17th. It's going to be a hard test in front, of me, in front of me. But I'm really not worried. And, yes, I do have power, but I'm not going in this fight only with power. I'm going to need all the tools to be sharp and in a fight of this, uh, you know, degree. It, he's a very good fighter, very smart. It's gonna, but I think uh, I got a lot of uh, surprises to show the world. How, uh, how, wary, how wary do you have to be of his punching power, which has been his calling card? He's got 20 knockouts in a row. Power is not something that frightens me. Uh, <laughs> nothing really frightens me. Uh, going in the ring when I know I'm prepared. I'm going to take on uh, the strongest there is. and uh, I'm, I'm very confident in my strength. 
So I have zero worries uh, going in in a fight uh, against anybody when I'm perfectly ready, which I am today. David, thank you very much. I look forward to this one. Appreciate it. See you next week. Thank you. Thanks. And once again, if you have a question, please press star, then one on your touchtone phone. And our next question comes from Jeffrey Freeman from the KO Digest. Jeffrey, please go ahead. Hi, thank you for putting me on the call. Of course, my question is for David Lemieux. Hello, David. Hello, Jeffrey. How are you? Hi. Much respect, David, for your willingness to tangle with Golovkin uh, so soon after winning your first world title. Uh, obviously, a lesser competitor would have milked it. Uh, with the recent defeat of Lucas Matisse and the potential defeat of Canelo at the hands of Cotto, do you feel any extra motivation to keep the Golden Boy promotion name relevant in boxing? Can you carry the Golden Boy banner on your shoulders if need be? I think all the the names associated with me are going to be very proud uh, to be associated with me with uh, as long as they're associated with me. Golden Boy, uh, have the Tiger, uh, everybody that's with me uh, are going to be proud. I bring a lot to the table, and I'm going to bring a, a tremendous amount of greatness on October 17th, so uh, nobody's going to be disappointed. Not the fans, not my family, and not my teammates. Right on. What are your thoughts on the Canelo Cotto fight? Who do you think is going to win that, David? Uh, I think it's a very interesting fight. Uh, Cotto being the veteran, Canelo being the young, hungry guy. Uh, but uh, I think the younger, hungrier guy uh, um, has the advantage in this fight being Canelo. Uh, Cotto is a great fighter, but uh, I'll give the edge. I think the edge is on Canelo this one. One more question. We all know that you and Gennady Golovkin are the middleweight power punchers. Um, and it, I know this has been touched upon a little in the call, but real simply, what will be more important in this fight, David, the good chin or the power punch? The biggest heart. Uh, the good punch? The, big, the, the, the fighter with the, with the biggest heart that can uh, take and receive. It's not, it's not about power this fight. It's about character and it's about uh, toughness and determination and who wants more it's gonna be we're both heart punchers everybody knows that but let's see beyond that right on good, good luck david lemieux thank you and our next question comes from jean-luc legende from RDS. Jean-Luc, please go ahead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, my question is for uh, David. David, I will ask my question in English for everyone, but I will appreciate if you can translate uh, your, uh, your answer right after in, in French just for my son. Back. So, uh, Abel Sanchez uh, just told us that uh, the, the difference in that fight will be the, the, boxing, IQ, the boxing IQ uh, that Gerandi Golovkin had uh, um, the, the, the edge on that uh, factor. Uh, Do the, the, you think that uh, your lack of experience Experience uh, can be a, a factor, and you, you will do your best to show that you, you have the, the, the real great and fine experience necessary to to make a, a good match. Uh, you want it in French or in English? Uh, both. Okay. Uh, well, I think uh, Abel Sanchez and the whole team are are quite underestimating me, but. You know, October, come October 17th, uh, I'm going to be very, very well prepared uh, with my boxing abilities, my boxing skills, my uh, strength and everything around it. So uh, I'm going to be a very complete fighter. It's not, uh, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not just David Lemieux, the power puncher, but I'm also David Lemieux, the, the fighter. So uh, I'm going to come in there very complete and uh, make sure that everything is uh, well-rounded to perfection. And in French, please, en français, s'il te plaît. Je pense que Abel Sanchez, il, il, il essaie de trouver des, 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 de quoi discuter pour, pour faire des sujets, mais euh, venir le, en disant que Golovkin, il y a la, il y a la meilleure boxe que moi. Bah, peut-être c'est vrai, peut-être c'est pas vrai, mais venant le, le, le 17 octobre, ça va pas faire de sens, parce que moi, je suis, euh, je suis un combattant qui est très très difficile, c'est très complet, et maintenant très prêt pour l'adversité que je vais avoir le, le, le 17 octobre. Alors, euh, j'ai des surprises à leur montrer. Merci, David. Thanks, everyone. Oui. And our next question comes from Dave Spencer from Fight News. Dave, please go ahead. Yeah, hi, David. How are you? I'm great. How are you, Dave? 
Good, good. Um, I wanted to talk not so much about the fight, but the the whole promotion leading up to the fight. Um, most of your your fights in the past have all been local affairs taking place at the Bell Center. This one's been uh, been quite different with the whole pay per view press conferences in New York and LA, conference calls, lots of public training. I'm just wondering how that whole being on a much bigger stage, how it's been for you and have you enjoyed it? Uh, it's been great. Uh, you know, uh, this is uh, this is the biggest achievement a fighter can have to uh, to get a chance to unify the titles. Uh, at Madison Square Garden, being filled up uh, the way it is, you know, it's, I think I've came a long way. Uh, Golovkin has done a great job. Uh, we're two great fighters, and we're there to show the world what they want to see. But there will be only one that walks out of that uh, that place with the belt, and I'm planning to do that. Uh, it's been a great, great camp. It's been a tremendous uh, achievement, uh, you know, getting a, getting a, the IBF world title against a very uh, hard opponent, a uh, very good opponent like Hassan and Dam. And now we step a few more steps even higher fighting uh, against uh, Golovkin, uh, unifying those titles. So it's going to be, uh, I'm very confident going in the fight. And, you know, it's a, it's a, I'm very happy. I'm very pleased of myself for, for, and my team uh, to be where I am and to be doing what I'm doing. Getting getting a taste of it. How how eager are you to uh, to to continue at this level and uh, have have bigger and bigger fights as uh, as your future uh, emerges? Well, we're at a big fight right now, so uh, I'll take care of that. And the future uh, comes fast enough. The future comes fast enough, so. So uh, I'll take it a step at a time, and uh, you know I'm I'm I want to I want to do great things in my life. So I'm you know uh, that's why I have to achieve great great things. So uh, this fight for me is very important, not just to fight it, but also to to win it and to show some uh, to shock the world. I'm a big underdog in this fight, and it's perfect by me. I'm gonna be the same in the ring. It. Is that a role that that you cherish? I mean, I don't know that you've ever been an underdog in the past. How how have you adjusted to to being that? Everybody's saying, "Ah, oh, David, you're you're an underdog." It, it's not words you're used to. Uh, not words you're used to hearing. Yeah, well, it's it's not a problem by me. I know who I am. Um, I, I have a lot of confidence in myself, and uh, my team does also. This is why we're at where we're at right now. And a lot of fighters duck, a lot of fighters I don't. You know, uh, Golovkin's a very good fighter, but uh, we are also a very good fighter. So uh, uh, being the underdog is just uh, going to be even better for me when I win. So uh, uh, it's, to me, it's makes no difference. I don't I don't really pay attention to those uh, the numbers or the the people who who give out a lot of show. I'm 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 focused uh, in the fight. I'm fighting Golovkin in the ring. It's me against him and that's it. No, nothing else matters. Okay, perfect. Thanks very much. Thanks. And our next question comes from Bob Velen from USA Today. Bob, go ahead. Hey David, how you doing? Hey, well, how are you? I'm I'm doing well, thanks. Uh, I wanted to ask you, yeah, after fighting uh, most of your career in Canada, how important is it for you to come to America and put on a good show for U.S. Uh, for a U.S. audience? Well, you know, uh, boxing. Uh, everybody knows that it's. Uh, U.S. has dominated boxing and, uh, you know, the big TV and everybody uh, is there. So it's very important for me to to make sure I, uh, I create a nice, uh, strong fan base in the U.S. Uh, and then the world. Um, you know, it's been a, been a very hard work, but it's, uh, it's, it's finally paying off, especially after I fought against Rosado. Uh, coming in the coming in the fight in the Barclays Center, uh, you know, at first I got booed, 
and then when I left the ring, I got a standing innovation. So you know, I, I think uh, I bring uh, I bring uh, enough to the table so I can. Uh, the, I'm a I'm a fan friendly uh, type of fighter, so uh, I make sure I always uh, respect the fans by giving them the the best fights I can. Um, do you expect uh, to have uh, a fair amount of Canadian fans uh, in house for you uh, at the Garden? Yes, uh, actually I do. There's a lot of uh, Canadian Quebecers who are coming down to uh, support me. Uh, uh, we have a big, uh, a few buses that are coming down uh, to support me. So uh, yes, I have a lot of uh, Canadian fans here that have always been uh, uh, pushing me and uh, motivating me since the beginning of my career, and they have been a great help in my uh, great achievements in life uh, in, in, in the boxing world. So, uh, so yeah, I expect a nice uh, crowd from, uh, from my behalf. Great. Thank you, David, uh, and best of luck on that 17. Thank you, Bob. Thanks. And our next question comes from George Willis from the New York Post. George, please go ahead. Hello, everybody. My question is for Oscar. Uh, Oscar, we've seen the sport basically dominated by one guy over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, now he's supposedly retired. Uh, what's your opinion? Is the sport uh, best when one guy is dominating, like maybe when Tyson was in his heyday and when you were in, in your time? Or is it like now when there are other people trying to make themselves known and become the best? Yeah, no, we're we're definitely uh, we're definitely uh, going into this uh, very unique uh, era, uh, the next era uh, in boxing, um, which is which is very exciting because not only will we be able to, to witness greatness from from one individual fighter, but uh, uh, but a handful of fighters, um, October seventeenth uh, with with the loss in the new. Uh, the winner obviously will 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 become you know the, the the undisputed middleweight champion of the world and will be recognized as as the very best. And uh, you know we have November November 21st with uh, Canelo Cotto. Uh, uh, we have another superstar in the making uh, um, in whoever wins that matchup. So you know it uh, boxing was was dominated in the past by by one individual. Whether it was Tyson, whether, whether it was uh, me or Julio Cesar Chavez, uh, Mayweather in in, uh, uh, in recent years, uh, so so we we have exciting times to look forward to because we will be able to to witness uh, um, um, uh, several uh, 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 champions who will who will carry the sport for 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 years to come. And where do you see boxing now? I know a lot of people were disappointed with the Mayweather-Pacquiao, and they stayed away from uh, Mayweather's last fight. Do you see an opportunity there to, I don't know if it's revive the sport, but to take it to a different sort of level than trying to, you know, have 2 million pay-per-view buys and generate $400 million? Is it good to sort of get back to the basics again? Well, it's... It, 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 it's always great to get back to the basics. But, um, um, the Mayweather era was was not about uh, uh, the respect. It, it was not about uh, it was not about uh, you know, uh, seeing who is the very best. Um, uh, about about uh, it wasn't about the fight. It was about the business. And and yeah. and what yeah. we're witnessing here with with Golovkin and you. Um, you know, it, 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 it's about honor and pride. It, it, it's about who is the, the, the best middleweight in the world. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, uh, the same with uh, with Canelo Cotto. You know, uh, so as long as we can, as long as we can give the fight fans the best fight possible, you know, boxing will always continue to grow. Uh, the fight fans will continue to buy pay per view and. Um, you know, will we see another uh, four million uh, uh, pay-per-view uh, fight? Absolutely, um, as long as we can keep on uh, um, putting the best against the best. Mm -hmm. Oscar, appreciate it. Thank you. And our next question comes from Frederick Daigle from the Canadian Press. Frederick, please go ahead. 
Yes, good afternoon. My question is for uh, Mark Ramsey. I would have liked to uh, hear your thoughts on, on uh, Abel Sanchez talking about uh, Triple G having a, a higher boxing IQ. And, and if, like David earlier, you could answer in both in English and French, that would help me. But to be honest, I don't really, really care right now. I don't really focus on what what Abel Sanchez say or don't say because the night of the fight is going to be Golovkin against Lemieux. It's not going to be me, me against Abel or. Uh, something else, and uh, if you look at the three last fight of David Lemieux, I really believe that the three trainer of the three last opponents really underestimate the ability and and the high Q of David Lemieux to box. Like when people look at David Lemieux on video, for sure the first thing you see that guys have a lot of power, but they underestimate the ability of David Lemieux and also his a uh, his ring high Q, and uh, they they may they they're gonna be the next one to be surprised. Si tu peux me le faire en français, j'aimerais ça. <rire> oui, juste que je, je porte à peu près pas d'attention à ce que, en ce moment, à ce que Abel Sanchez peut dire ou, ou faire. C'est pas quelque chose qui est, qui est important. On est concentré sur ce que nous, on, on veut apporter à ce combat-là. Euh, la seule chose que je peux dire, dans les, dans les trois derniers combats, c'est le feeling que j'ai eu dans les, de voir les, les, les entraîneurs des, des, des derniers opposants euh, sous-estimer un petit peu la, la qualité de boxeur puis l'intelligence de ring de David Lemieux. Ils ont tous payé le prix pour ça. Puis si Abel s'en va dans cette direction-là, il va être le prochain sur la Anything you've done differently for this fight, uh, preparing wise, preparation wise? No, we we train like we train usually. For sure, we have a specific uh, specific opponent. Uh, we analyze uh, very well, uh, uh, Mr. Golovkin. But at the same time, it's very important for us to what David Lemieux can bring to that ring and impose the night of the fight. Not only follow uh, what is uh, Gennady Golovkin, but impose what is David Lemieux. What what he can bring to that ring is very important. And uh, we did a very good job at it in the last uh, the last eight weeks. Peux-tu te redemander de traduire une dernière fois? Bien sûr. Euh, simplement que, écoutez, euh, ben, on fait des camps d'entraînement, habituellement, c'est toujours sur le même, un peu sur le même modèle. Euh, maintenant, on a un adversaire qui est spécifique. C'est sûr qu'on l'a étudié, on l'a bien, bien regardé, on connaît ses forces, ses faiblesses. Mais en même temps, on est très concentré aussi sur qu ce que David Lemieux, lui, peut imposer le soir du combat. Et non, non pas être toujours. Quand on regarde seulement que l'adversaire, on est, on est souvent là, euh, des, des, on suit souvent la stratégie de, de l'autre personne. On, on se concentre beaucoup plus sur l'autre que sur qu ce que nous, nous, on peut apporter dans ce combat de boxe. Alors, ce n'est pas le cas avec, avec notre équipe. On est, on, est, on est très conscient de ça. Et puis, David va, va imposer son style euh, le 17. Merci beaucoup. Ça fait plaisir. And our final comment comes from Mike Woods from The Ring and The Sweet Science. Mike, please go ahead. Actually, already asked and answered. Thanks. We'll see you guys soon. Okay, thanks, Mike. Um, now I'd like to uh, introduce David for his final comments. David, do you have any final comments? Uh, October 17th, history will be made. Uh, it's going to be a fight to be talked about for years to come, and uh, I'm extremely excited to be part of uh, part of this uh, great event and to be uh, showing the world, uh, you know, a great night of boxing. And uh, unifying those titles is the absolute goal for for me on October 17th. Thank you. Thanks, David. Uh, Mark Ramsey, do you have any final comments from today's conference call? No, just uh, just say to the people that all piece of the puzzle are together right now, and just don't miss the show. It's going to be a great uh, even of boxing. Thank you, Mark. Um, Camila, Stefan, any final comments today? Camille? We'd simply like to thank yes, hello. We'd like to simply thank everybody for being there, uh, being attentive to what we're doing, and bringing boxing uh, to the levels uh, that uh, it's been for uh, so many years. It's the sweet science, and these guys are going to contribute to the history, and uh, we're very, very confident that we're going to have a new superstar in David Lemieux. To repeat uh, Oscar's words. You know, we have a great team around us with Oscar, Bernard, Eric, Mark. Uh, I mean, I feel like we've done truly all our homework. And if we've been underestimated, then uh, the price will be paid. Thank you so much, Camille. And now to make the closing comments for this call, Oscar De La Oya, Chairman and CEO of Golden Boy Promotions. Go ahead, Oscar. Thank you very much, everybody, for being on the call. Um, like everyone said, we're all excited. October 17th will be uh, 
uh, one for the ages. Uh, it will be uh, exciting. Will be a historical uh, champion versus champion. Uh, uh, the uh, sold out arena will be a great indication that this event uh, will be a total success all around. So uh, we will see you uh, fight week. Uh, we have a lot of exciting uh, uh, updates and uh, a lot of. Uh, um, um, uh, we have uh, the training session. We have the uh, media workout. So uh, we'll see you in New York. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This concludes today's conference. Thank you for participating. You may now disconnect. Thank okay. you, guys. Thank you.